In the living system, several enzyme-catalyzed reactions occur simultaneously in various metabolic pathways. Regulation of enzyme activity is essential to coordinate those metabolic processes for the proper functioning of the living cells. Enzyme regulation is also important for the maintenance of cellular homeostasis. Homeostasis means the state of steady internal, physical, chemical and social conditions maintained by living systems. Regulation of enzyme activities occurs at different stages in one or more ways to achieve cellular economy. Those different ways are allosteric regulation, activation of latent enzymes, compartmentation of metabolic pathways, control of enzyme synthesis, enzyme degradation and isozyme. Already I have discussed about allosteric regulation in my last video. Today in this video I am going to discuss about activation of latent enzymes. So today topic of the presentation is activation of latent enzymes. Activation of latent enzymes can be possible by irreversible covalent activation or zymogen activation and reversible covalent modifications. First of all inactive latent enzyme to active enzyme formation by irreversible covalent activation that is called zymogen activation. Latin means existing but not yet developed. Latent enzymes are inactive. Their activity only become manifest when the conditions are changed. Some enzymes are synthesized as proenzymes or zymogens. Those are inactive which undergo irreversible covalent activation by breakdown of one or more peptide bonds. Those peptide bonds are actually removed by the action of proteases or HCL. Let's see few examples of zymogen activation including pepsinogen and plasminogen activation and pancreatic zymogen activation cascade. Gastric juice is a unique combination of hydrochloric acid, lipase and pepsin. By the action of HCL which is present in gastric juice, pepsinogen is converted into active pepsin which itself catalyzes further conversion from pepsinogen. Pepsin refers to the chief digestive enzyme in the stomach which breaks down proteins into polypeptides. Plasminogen is converted to plasmin either by tissue, plasmin, uh, tissue plasminogen activator or by urekinase plasminogen activator which are two closely related trypsin like serine proteases. Enteropeptidase or enterokinase is a type 2 transmembrane serine protease which is localized to the branch border of the duodenal and jejunal mucosa. It is synthesized as a zymogen or inactive enzyme as proenteropeptidase that requires activation by another protease either trypsin or possibly duodenase. Enteropeptidase cleaves trypsinogen to generate active trypsin. Again, this active trypsin is again uh, acting uh, is again acting on trypsinogen to produce active trypsin that is called autocatalysis. Now, active trypsin in turn activates other digestive enzyme precursors, including chymotrypsinogen to chymotrypsin, procarboxypeptidase to carboxypeptidase proelastase to elastase and prolipase to lipase. So these are other digestive enzymes. Th those are activated by trypsin. The intestinal activation of pancreatic zymogens is a physiological mechanism to prevent the proteolytic damage of the pancreas or pancreatic duct system. The projective mechanisms within the zymogen Granules include the pancreatic trypsin inhibitor, pH conditions that are below the optimum for most enzymes and proteases that can degrade activated enzymes. Let's talk about inactive enzyme to active enzyme formation by reversible covalent modifications. Certain enzymes exist in the active and inactive forms which are interconvertible depending on the needs of the body. 
the interconversion is brought about by the reversible covalent modifications of one or more of the amino acid residues in the enzyme molecule over 500 different types of covalent modification have been found in proteins covalent modifications can change the chemical properties of the site consequences on the structure and functions of the protein modified are manifested providing a sensitive method for cellular regulation introduction of a charge can alter the local properties of the enzyme and induce a change in conformation whereas introduction of a hydrophobic group can trigger association with a membrane common modifying groups are phosphoryl acetyl adenylyl uridylyl methyl amide carboxyl meristoyl palmitoyl prenyl hydroxyl sulfate and adenosine diphosphate ribosyl groups Phosphorylation occurs in tyrosine, serine, threonine, and histidine amino acid residues. In that case, ATP is providing phosphoryl group to these uh, amino acids. Whereas, adenylylation occurs in tyrosine residue. In that case, also ATP is providing adenylyl group to tyrosine. Acetylation occurs in lysine and alpha amino amino terminus group. In that case, acetyl CoA is providing acetyl group to these amino acids. Meristoylation occurs in alpha amino amino terminus group. In that case, meristoyl group is transfer from meristoyl CoA to the enzyme. Methylation occurs in glutamic acid residues of the enzyme. In that case, methyl group is transferred from S-adenosyl methionine to the enzyme. ADP ribosylation occurs in arginine, glutamine, cysteine and diphthamide residues present in the enzyme. In that case, adenosine diphosphate ribosyl group is transferred from NAD to the enzyme. In few cases, Entire proteins are used as specialized modifying groups like ubiquitin. Ubiquitin is a small regulatory protein found in most tissues of eukaryotic organisms. In that case, ubiquitin group is transferred from activated ubiquitin to lysine residues present in the enzyme. Let's see examples of activation of enzyme by phosphorylation. Phosphorylation is the most common type of regulatory modification. It is estimated that one third of all proteins in eukaryotic cell are phosphorylated and one or often many phosphorylation events are part of virtually every regulatory process. Some proteins have only one phosphorylated residue, others have several and a few have dozens of sites for phosphorylation. This mode of covalent modification is central to a large number of regulatory pathways. Phosphorylation is typically carried out under the control of another enzyme called kinase. A phosphate groups can be removed again via another enzyme called a phosphatase. Let's see interconversion of phosphorylated phosphorylase A and dephosphorylated phosphorylase B. Glycosin phosphorylase is a muscle enzyme that breaks down glycogen to provide energy. This enzyme is a homodimer and exists in two interconvertible forms. Phosphorylase B, that is dephosphoenzyme, is inactive, which is converted to uh, con con converted by phosphorylation of serine residues to active form phosphorylase A. Other examples of phosphorylated active enzymes are citrate lyase and fructose 2 6 bisphosphatase. The key result of phosphorylation is that a neutral serine is suddenly masked by an anionic phosphate group that negative charge alters intermolecular attractions. Phosphorylation can alter protein conformation, already I told you. For some proteins such as transcription factors sequestered in the cytosolic compartment, changes in protein conformation can unmask amino acids which function to regulate subcellular distribution such as nuclear localization signals, 
whereas phosphorylation can create binding domains that promote important protein protein interactions that regulate a diverse array of cellular functions such as occurs with protein tyrosine kinase receptors. There are some enzymes which are active in dephosphorylated state and become inactive when phosphorylated. As for example, glycogen synthase, acetyl QA carboxylase, and HMG QA reductase. Glycogen synthase is phosphorylated by three major enzymes glycogen synthase kinase 3, that is GSK3, protein kinase A, and casein kinase. Insulin activates glycogen synthase B via inhibiting GSK3 activity through activating a phosphoprotein phosphatase. So in, the, in this case, insulin is favoring dephosphorylation. That means it is activating gly, uh, glycogen synthase. Whereas glucagon and epinephrine, they are inhibiting Phosphoprotein phosphatase activity, that means it, they are inhibiting dephosphorylation process. Glucose 6 phosphate and glucose, they are activating dephosphorylation process. Therefore, they are uh, activating glycogen synthase enzyme. Glycogen metabolism is controlled by the activity of glycogen phosphorylase and glycogen synthase. The major regulatory feature involved in the metabolism is phosphorylation which inactivates glycogen synthase whereas activates glycogen phosphorylase. Let's see activation of enzymes by oxidation and reduction of disulfide bonds. SH or sulfitryl groups are present in the R group of cysteine amino acids. When two cysteine molecules are in close proximity, the sulfitryl group present between them oxidizes and forms a bond called a disulfide bond, which is a functional group. Disulfide bonds play a crucial role in proteins modulating their stability and constraining their conformational dynamics. There are a few enzymes which are active only with sulfidryl or SH groups. Examples are succinate dehydrogenase and urease. Substances like glutathione bring about the stability of these enzymes. So in this case, reduced form is the active enzyme form, whereas oxidized form is inactive enzyme where disulfide bond is present. Thank you very much for watching this video. In order to motivate me, kindly like, share and subscribe this channel. Don't forget to press the bell icon to get notifications.